Hello everyone. This is Professor Nelson from Electronics. This is a linear transformer, which you can use to make a power supply to power several electronic boards or electronic devices. However, it is quite heavy and quite expensive and bulky. And sometimes that is not an option. Therefore, sometimes we need a fairly compact and low-cost power supply. For example, like this one here. It is a capacitive power supply that is much smaller than this transformer. However, you can use it to power an electronic board, such as this LED light. And this would be its circuit. And this time, we are going to learn how to design and assemble a capacitive power supply. So you can do it at home. And that way, you can power your electronic boards or electronic devices. Since you can find this type of power supply in different electronic devices, it is used in coffee makers, blenders, refrigeration equipment, and even in timer circuits. So, without further ado, let's continue with the video. Okay, before we move on to calculating our capacitive source, let's talk about a very important characteristic of capacitors. I'm talking about capacitive reactants, that is, the resistance that capacitors offer when alternating current is applied to them. In other words, a capacitor can act as a resistor when alternating current is applied to it. But with the advantage that these capacitors won't heat up like resistors. Since current can't pass through capacitors from one end to the other, the capacitors will never heat up. Now let's see how much resistance each capacitor offers by building this circuit. Here we have a series circuit to which we will apply approximately 15 volts of alternating current at 50 Hertz. Therefore, this circuit would be equivalent to a circuit with two resistors in series. Capacitive reactants can be calculated with this formula. 2 times pi times the frequency in hertz, times the capacitance in farads. Now we can see that the 2.2 microfarad capacitor offers a reactance or resistance of 1.4 kilohms. And the 1.5 microfarad capacitor offers a resistance of 2.1 kilohms. Therefore, with this, we can calculate how much is the voltage in each capacitor. According to this, we have a voltage of 6.8 volts across C1, or the 2.2 microfarad voltage, and 9 volts across C2, or the 1.5 microfarad voltage. Let's confirm this with the multimeter. The voltage across C1 should be 6 volts or something close to it. There we have 6 volts. The voltage across C2 should be approximately 9 volts. And we have close to 9 volts. Therefore, the calculations are correct and it's proven that a capacitor works like a resistor when alternating current is applied to it. Very good, now we move on to doing the calculation for our capacitive source. Now let's calculate how much current we can supply if we use a 1.5 microfarad capacitor. At the same time, we are going to calculate the value of our 1 
and we are also going to calculate its power. To do this, the first thing we're going to do is write down the capacitance of our capacitor, which in this case is 1.5 microfarads. With that, we're going to calculate the reactance. The reactance of that capacitor will be equal to 2 times pi, times the frequency, and times the capacitance. We substitute the values. And the resulting reactance would be 2,122 ohms. That's the resistance our capacitor offers. Now, if we use a voltage of 220 volts, we can calculate the current we're going to obtain. Therefore, the maximum current we can obtain would be equal to 220 volts divided by 2122 ohms. And the maximum current would be 102 milliamps. Now, to calculate our 1, we're going to use the following formula. Our 1 will be equal to 220 volts divided by 1 ampere. This will give us 220 ohms. Now, remember that our 1 is a component that extends the lifespan of the diode bridge. That is, it limits the maximum current that passes through the diode bridge. In this case, I'm setting an ampere, which would be the maximum a diode bridge can handle. You can increase or decrease the value. You can maintain the 220 ohm resistor or vary it. You can increase its value to 330 ohms or 470 ohms. Or you can reduce it to 100 ohms or 47 ohms. This will influence the size of the resistor. That is, if you increase the resistor value, you'll have to use higher power resistors. And if you use lower value resistors, you'll use a lower power resistor or a quarter watt resistor. That would be the difference between using larger or smaller values than the one calculated. But it is definitely necessary or advisable to use a protective resistor. Now, I'm going to use a 47 ohm resistor. However, what would happen if we used 220 ohms? Well, the power or size of that resistor would be equal to the voltage falling across it, multiplied by the current passing through it. However, we don't have the voltage, so the voltage across our 1 will be equal to the maximum current passing through the value of our 1. Therefore, this will be equal to 102 milliamps times 220 ohms. Therefore, the voltage across R1 will be equal to 22.4 volts. With this, we can calculate the power of R1, which would be equal to 22.4 volts times 102 milliamps. This gives us a power of 2.3 watts, which means I need to use a 5 watt resistor so it doesn't burn out. One of this size. But what happens if I use a 47 ohm resistor? Well, doing the same calculations, we see that the voltage across R1 would be 4.8 volts. And the power of our one would be 490 milliwatts, meaning I would need to use a one watt resistor. That would be the difference. If we use 47 ohms, we'll use one watt. If we use 220 ohms, we'll use five watts. Therefore, it's better to use a one watt resistor than a five watt resistor. Once all the values have been calculated, let's now use the multimeter to test the voltage drops 
and the current our capacitive source can deliver. Okay, for these tests, we're going to use a 12 volt light bulb. And we're going to measure the voltage drop across R1 and the current passing through the entire circuit. We have 4.7 volts across R1. And according to our calculations, we should have 4.8 volts. However, it's quite approximate. The current should be approximately 102 milliamps. Let's measure the intensity. And we have 99 milliamps, very close to 102 milliamps. Finally, let's measure the voltage across the Zener diode, which should be approximately 10 volts. We have 10 volts which means the Zener diode is working correctly without overheating. Now, something very important to remember. We're managing almost 100 milliamps through the entire circuit. And if that current doesn't pass to the load, that is, the LED bulb, that means all that current will pass through the Zener diode. So the Zener diode will get quite hot. Since the power will exceed the one what it can handle, there must always be a load connected to this type of power supply. Very well. Now what we're going to do is assemble this capacitive source on a board so we can use it later in other projects. Very well, now we have our board ready. Now let's run some tests and see how it works. So let's run some tests. Okay guys, now, to finish, we're going to test our power supply or capacitive power supply on an electronic board, which you can see has several integrated circuits. We're going to connect our capacitive power supply to the power outlet. And as you can see, the electronic board has just turned on. Additionally, we're going to connect this line follower module or infrared sensor. We're going to reset the electronic board. And see how it works. As you can see, our electronic board is working without problems using a capacitive power supply. And this way, you can also power your electronic boards if they are low consumption. Right now, on this electronic board, the LED is upside down, which is why it's not working. Now, the design of the capacitive power supply board will be available to all channel members as a way of thanking them for their support.
And if you're not a member, you can become a member in the members section. So, a big thank you to all the channel members, and also to all the people who have been donating to the channel's videos. The design will also be available to them. Okay, guys, that's how the video concludes. Now, don't forget that a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.